So what's going on with me and my ex-wife is absolutely detrimental to my health. What she's doing is popping back into my life when I finally get away from her. I finally feel free and my heart had some time to heal. And then all of a sudden, here she is again. So I decide to trick her. I stage a breakup with my current girl just to make her seem like what she was trying to do was working. But little does she know she was playing right into my trap. So, me and my wife, well... I guess I should say ex-wife of years, had been dating for three years and married for seven. We did not have any kids and it's almost four years now since the divorce went through and out of the blue. I get a message on WhatsApp from a number not saved in my contact list asking, Hi, is this, um, well, then they said my name. And out of pure curiosity, I replied and it turns out it was my ex. I was quite stunned at this. She then sends a voice note. I've waited a long time to send this just to allow some healing to occur, but it's now I would really like to try to make things better between us for the both of us. I've missed you, and I want us to be friends. Simply friends. I understand that you may never be okay with this, and if that's the case, I understand, but I'll try once because, you know, hey, Life is short. Hope you're healing and, well, you're happier. Does she think four years is long enough to heal the heart? Does she think she deserves my friendship because of a voice note? Does she think that being her friend now will help me heal and move on going forward? I just can't believe how self-centered and unaware she is. So, how would that work if we were friends? With all that's been said and done, she said that she would like us to be friends still, but I didn't have any of these thoughts at first. I was naive. My stupid and forgiving self said yes and messaged her on Instagram. We've sent some messages on there back and forth and, well, here's the context. Like I said, Angela and I were married for seven years. She's been married twice. The first time was when she was really young, and it only lasted two years. And her second marriage ended when she was 24. She has no children. Her last divorce was really horrible. There was domestic abuse and drug abuse involved, so the experience just really left a mark on her. Suffice to say, her ex, but by the way, was a total loser, but I'm not going there, is completely out of her life, and she never wants to speak to him again. We were living together at my parents. Ha! <laughs> Big mistake. She was a wonderful person when I met her. I cannot imagine in our almost seven years not loving him. She was everything to me. Even in the depths of life's most horrible days, she was my person and I loved her. Everyone of my family loved her as well and just always praised her and said that she was so darn cute. But she changed when she fell out of love for me. She started missing calls, not replying to my text messages. I should also mention that she was unemployed for over a third of our relationship and would just simply sit in the apartment watching Netflix or playing some war game on her computer, aka my spare computer, typing away in some group chat. I would give her cash whenever she asked. I would also inquire just a few times a week. And, well, I would ask her about her job hunt. Only to be dismissed or given a growing amount of excuses such as, But I don't have a car. How would I even get there, honey? The bus doesn't run in that area. The internet went down today, so I could not apply. Ah, etc., etc., then some mid-level company gives her a job, and I thought things were going to get changed, well, for the better. But she would not just join the company for some reason. Due to me getting a new job, my dream job actually, I got busier than usual. She could not hide her contempt relating to this part, to the point where she was eventually so absent that I would only talk to her like once a week. She would disappear for days just to appear back with the message of, Sorry, I slept over at somebody's house. 
some random guy or girl. This went on until I hit the lowest points of my life because of my health issue plus my grandmother's death. See, she had a heart attack in front of me and died. When I told Angela about it, she said, Oh, that sucks. And then she just disappeared again. It changed when she broke things off with me, though. She became clingy and kept saying she loved me. I wouldn't reply and she kept making comments like, Hey, my friends kept asking why I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, remember my friend? She thinks that you're not in my league. My friends want to hang out with them and meet new people. We didn't really have the proper closure that a relationship usually has. and I didn't know if she was already talking with somebody new. It was a bit of a mess. That night, we had a nice date, which was after a long time. When I was about to drop her off at her place, she commented that she was having doubts about our relationship. And she lets it slip. She wants to move out. I was super confused and did not say a word. She sounded off, so I started to prod. While I'm driving, I became hysterical, and I had to abandon my car on the side of the road. I tried to be diplomatic, even though being a messy ordeal, I was pretty much seething. But she, quote, has a gut feeling I'm not the one for her. No other valid reason for leaving nothing, just I am not the one for her. A gut feeling. I needed an explanation and she just blurts out on the phone she wants another relationship. So I initiated the divorce the next noon because talking to her was a big headache. She gave various reasons for the divorce, but my primary motivation was that she never really fell for me and instead just settled for me. Less than four hours later, she starts calling and texting me, saying, Oh, I'm so sorry. Didn't mean it. That she likes me, and she was stupid for what she said slash listened to her, quote, new friends. She was going to stop talking to her friends and co-workers. Well, I was livid, but I could not force somebody to be in love with me, and she had then agreed not to contest the divorce. For some of our messages I received from our friends, it looked like she told them the truth. That her friends started to give her insecurities about our relationship, and she just stupidly went with it. Her parents tried to reach out to me, asking what happened. We're very close, and I'd been radio silent. Luckily, I could work remotely for some days, and I left my apartment with my laptop, found a nice place with good internet, and to still do some work. I work as a clinical trial manager. I was expecting her to at least shed a tear for our lost relationship. However, she did not. She seemed absolutely nonchalant about the breakup. But the only thing that kept just troubling me is the fact how she got over our relationship so darn easily. I never felt that her feelings for me were fake. Now, I question myself, were they? as one just cannot switch from one partner to another so easily, right? Hypothetically, if I had to get married to somebody else, leaving her behind, I would have for sure had a long conversation with her, making sure to end our relationship on the best note possible. She had a Disney idea of love as a magical spark of passion that never dies or requires maintenance. She's never been in a serious relationship other than ours and suffered religious emotional abuse in her upbringing and continues to have a deeply dishonest relationship with her parents and most of her family. I held her hand through learning about relationships and committed love and a great deal more. She needed the lived experience of relationship reality in order to commit to the hard work that, quote, us required. But... Despite knowing all that intellectually, it was still incredibly hard to accept on an emotional level. But then I had a breakthrough. I was beginning to wane off the addicted neurochemicals and hopeless romanticism that had me putting her on a pedestal and revising my memories of our life altogether. Now that I've taken a more sober look at her flaws and how much more I invested in the relationship than she did, how much more supportive I was. How much more loving. 
My cousin is a family court lawyer and basically raked her over the coals. I've been dating my current significant other for two years now. Friends for three years leading up to it. We started seeing each other a few months after the divorce process was started. We both always had eyes for each other, but kept it professional slash casual. We took it relatively slow starting out, but have since gotten fairly serious and have been spending a buttload of time together. She knows that I'm divorced. Since the relationship was relatively new, I did not tell her about my ex. Well, for one, I did not know where this relationship would even go. It is my first relationship after the divorce, you know. The relationship has been very good so far, though with one or two minor arguments, but nothing unusual for a relatively new relationship where two people are getting to know each other. We always had open communication, talk things out. We haven't had any major issues. We argue over little things such as movies and TV anime shows, food, etc. We don't hide anything. We eventually moved in together a rented home in a quaint suburban neighborhood. Anyways, even though the breakup with Angela was generally pretty crappy, it ended up for the better, at least for me. I took that quote, living good is the best revenge thing to heart, and started posting to my story about how life was pretty much great for me, how happy I was, and how fulfilled I'm feeling. It's true that this is what my life feels like right now, but to be honest, I started bragging about how great life is just to get back at my ex. See, basically, I've been flexing on her for a few weeks now about how life is so much better without her. Me and Emily are the iconic couple, according to our social group. Best friends, allies, and public action consistently challenged and encouraged each other's positive growth had the most enjoyable and deep conversations with each other. Independent but tightly knit, no dysfunctions or identifiable problems. Excellent communication, respect, honesty, trust. She thinks of me as the smartest, funniest person on earth. And to me, she was the most genuinely kind and absurdly beautiful human in the world. I've never met another person whom I've shared so much similar values with or wanted such similar life goals. We can be together 24-7 for two weeks and not get remotely tired of each other, not even once. Well, we fight well and respectfully. So the issue starts here. Four days after I replied to Angela's text, she came to our door uninvited unexpectedly came in with my favorite t-shirt of hers, trimmed her hair, and I just made a joke saying something like, oh no, my ex, and invited her in. She said she was simply out with her buddies and she, quote, thought she'd stop by and say hello. We shared the same friend group and were in contact ever since. Every day, really. I mean, we talked on WhatsApp in a group chat and in private too. Emily was fine with it at first, but when we started talking more, she seemed to think that I'm just being too friendly with Angela. This manifested pretty early on when Angela called me one time while I was having dinner with Emily just to discuss an issue related to her medical insurance. From the next day onwards, Emily was acting weird and I noticed it for some days and straight on asked her what was wrong. She answered that she feels that my tone of voice with Angela was, quote, too friendly. And I seemed way too eager to help her out with the problem, and she needed some documents from me to sort out her insurance. It's no big deal, really, in my opinion. But soon I realized that this made Emily so sad and frustrated. She told me that she's jealous of the stories which sometimes come up about my past, like... The place me and Angela have traveled together, even though I talk about those places, not her. She knows that we were there together, though. Emily's naturally very understanding, so she understood me when I explained that I only agreed to be a friend to her, and I had nothing more in mind as her character is not good. But 
Angela soon contacted Emily on Facebook and sent her a screenshot from before, or possibly during the early part of our divorce and getting to know one another stage, where I told my ex I would take her back. I know this because Emily tells me that while she's not happy about the screenshot, she feels like she needs some space just to get her head right because this has brought up emotional wounds from when she had an ex-husband cheat on her and just made her feel like she wasn't enough. I explained, but she said the screenshot is not really the issue, but her old wounds are... I talked about this to Angela, who blatantly lied to me that she never sent such screenshots and that Emily's just trying to blame the fight on me because she's seeing someone else and wants an open relationship. Well, I started to see what Angela was doing because I knew for dang sure that it did not sound like Emily at all. I laughed and sighed as I never imagined Angela would turn up so jealous that she wants to ruin my relationship using these brainless manipulation tactics. I was also happy that she wanted to move out when we were spouses. I didn't tell her anything, though. That night, I received a message from a random account saying I was cheating for the last few months, and they just now found out that I had a girlfriend. Again, I don't know why Angela thought Emily would see this message. Brains. The same night, Emily told me that my Angela messaged her on Instagram and basically told her that I slept with her. I didn't want to continue this crap show. I showed the message to Emily and explained to her how Angela tries to separate us. She replied, let's do it. I was like, what? She explained, let's go ahead and get separated and make her believe that she did successfully make us break up. So... We invited Angela over for dinner to discuss something important, huh? Midway, we staged a heated argument. We passionately exchanged a few words, each of us playing our part flawlessly. Angela came to my defense, which is the plan, asking Emily to shut up and saying that she was first envy of how easily I moved on after the divorce. She was upset because of, quote, what I'm getting out of life now that we've split. According to her, her only fear was that I met someone who she really connected with, moved on with her, and that together we would build a future that she and I were going to have together. She then goes on to say, But now I can see that you've ended up with an egoist. An unspoken satisfaction of our plan just falling into place. Although I did not expect she would ever reveal her own insecurities and toxic nature. With a knowing smile, I looked at Angela and I said, You see, Angela, what you've witnessed here tonight was all part of a plan. This, see, it was meant to show that we're stronger than your deceit. Now, I want a clean break, meaning I want you out of the family picture for good. Wait a second, you mean this was all staged? Why? She stumbled over her words, attempting to comprehend the situation at hand. She taunted Emily by saying, I give my used things to others and stay happy. And she left. Getting her message has just dredged everything back up, and it's a total head duck that I totally did not need right now. For the life of me, I could not see what her motivation was here until the dinner. The humiliation seems necessary, right? We simply made a choice to put the hurt from the divorce behind us by being friends. But now I've seen her true face. Because all her sweet words might be just telling me what I want to hear or needing to believe it herself. Her action is all that really matters. And her action is that she left and wants me to be unhappy all my life. I don't want to live in the past. While I'm grateful for my ex for the good times... Things just got overly toxic towards the end, and I'm happy and grateful I found Emily. I didn't think I'd ever fall in love again, especially not to the degree that I would have been almost willing to take the plunge again. You see, I know no one plans to be a second wife, especially when it's their first marriage, but I think I will be a good spouse to her. My first marriage was kind of long, but it ended badly. She left me ruined. 
update number one. Hey guys, I just want to thank everybody for your support and words of encouragement. There's been a lot of great advice in the first post, and I can't thank you enough. Unfortunately, Angela has continued to harass us both with tirades of non-stop phone calls. She frequently insults Emily with fat comments, calling her Queen Chlamydia. Her ex-husband messed around, gave it to her years ago, and so many other words, homewrecker, you name it. Oh, stupid, fake, play wife, etc. I have many audio recordings and I don't interact with her at all. 99.9% .9 of the time. For reference, she fits in normal standards and, well, she keeps calling Emily my babysitter and demanding to know why she's always around. Calls her some heinous things in front of people all the time. She's even attempted to come at her a few times just to intimidate or provoke a confrontation. She's not engaged her or put herself out there for it. She uses others' money and sympathy. Very narcissistic in nature. She literally wigs out without being provoked about how I have Emily and how she has no body and how I have everything. She just lays it out as if I left her in the ditches. She wanted to move out on her accord, yet it's my fault. She's just jealous that... After a divorce, she did not get any partner, whereas I got the perfect one. The other day, my boss sent me an urgent message asking if we could do a Zoom meeting. You see, I accepted. When his picture came up, there were two cops behind him. Apparently, someone they would not name asked them to do a wellness check on me. They tried my apartment, but nobody was there. Then my work, I wasn't there. My boss knew I was actively working remotely and just called me. While well, I had to explain the situation that I was alright, just had my phone off due to a bit of drama. She posted a story, but in a way that made me out to be a toxic villain. The story appeared on a popular page of a website and was also on a friend's TikTok page that went viral. It wasn't hard to identify myself because I recognized the dress. And she also used my real name and the story. You see, I don't understand why she's doing this because we had been civil with each other until now. The lady needs to be in a mental health care facility. See, she will type walls of text and emails over emails over emails like she finally goes to a job, even saying nasty crap over a recorded work line. If I knew it would not cause her issues, I would have reported her to the violating the employee code of conduct already. It's frustrating. It's leading me to want to do something to her for my own sanity. Update number two. Hey guys, there's a lot of comments here suggesting that I'm just stupid or naive. Adore Matt for letting her off easily, but guys, I won't lie. I think you all might be right. I do believe in taking the high road on most occasions, but I don't think this should be one of those times. As a side note, I don't believe that wanting to see the best in people makes you naive. For the update, me and Emily are going to get married in a couple of weeks so that Angela stops bothering us. I would think some significant time has passed for us to not make the mistake again or act on impulse. I did it all. Church wedding, reception, weekend party, bachelor party, you name it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but I don't need that again. Even though she did not have the full experience, she doesn't want to do the process over again. We're just going to go down and do that old court hearing, quick and simple. I just needed to go on the website with some limits to make an appointment, then go with Emily and our IDs to get the license. That's the plan. I'm also supposed to, well, go to Angela's parents' house tonight. Like I said in the main post, her parents and I get along a whole awful lot. And I've still been in keeping contact with them on occasion. His mom's checked in on me a few times to see how I was handling everything. I'm friends with her on Facebook, saw that they were building a new shooting range on their rural property, commented that it looked good. They said that they'll be in town soon and they're trying to make plans to meet up with me. I know that they don't have hope of us getting back together because I've told everything she's done to me and Emily. 
Obviously, my ex would not be there. Probably would not even hear about it, to be honest, and one of my friends told me she knows Kara. My colleague has been updating Angela about us for many months now because she brought it up to him once that she felt bad doing this behind her back. Well, I was furious when I confronted Kara about it, let me tell ya. She showed me all their messages, and none of it was saying where we live or pictures of us, but telling her what we're up to, you know, which is what we're doing. Update number three. Hey guys, see, I did not have a meeting last night. I rescheduled for the day after tomorrow, which is a Friday. Angela and I did not see each other again just recently at this friend's baby shower. Well, I noticed she was there with some guy, and she actually approached me like 10 minutes later by the bathroom in the house. She asked me if I could leave because she's with her boyfriend, and it's just awkward with both of us there at the party. But like I have not even approached them at all, so why would it be awkward if we don't interact at all? She wasn't letting it go. She actually told me, please, it's complicated. I told her if her boyfriend doesn't know that we have a history, then he won't need to because I honestly don't care. All I'm doing is being here, celebrating one of my close friends' day. So if she leaves me alone, I'll leave her alone. Well, that did not end up being the case. They left not even an hour later. I kept my word, though, about not going near them, but one of my friends told me her boyfriend saw me, and for whatever reason, they started arguing. It wasn't subtle, either. They went to the front of the house, but you could still hear what sounded like them raising their voice at each other. And a few minutes later, I saw her walking to my friend, probably telling her bye. But she definitely looked right at me. After that, she looked mad. Everybody at the party was confused after, so... They were all talking about it for literally the rest of the time. She called me since I never changed my number, and she told me thanks for ruining a party, when all this could have been just avoided. I asked her what could have been avoided, but again, she doesn't tell me. She, see, just thinks it's all my fault for whatever went down. The whole party was meant for my friend, and it was turned into some drama. Just because I would not leave, even if it was for some unknown reason. I don't know what to think now or why it was such a big deal that we were at the same party when neither of us even talked at all. You see, I'm just trying my hardest to reason with a 37-year-old woman about what a problem is, and I've reached my limit. I hung up within a second and called her father. Poor guy was pleasant as a peach. Happy to hear from me asking how the winter is treating us in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I had to cut through the pleasantries and let him know his daughter keeps committing, uh, crimes and bothering us in public. He tells me that he'll talk to her. I apologize for dragging him into this and promise to catch up during Friday. Anyways, I just wanted to say that planning my wedding has been like 5% stress, 95% happiness, and rainbow unicorns of awesomeness. Not even kidding. I've been amazed at how enjoyable the whole thing has been for me. We're having a very small wedding with just my parents, her parents, my best friend, my new stepsister and older sister and her siblings on the guest list. We're going to spend the weekend before our wedding doing touristy things with our family and friends in Atlanta and have our rehearsal dinner at my fiancé's favorite restaurant. My dress was super affordable and I have the cutest cats and space flats. <laughs> our save the dates and invitations are just as quirky and fun as we are and we're looking at around a thousand dollars for the whole event. That's it. Not including our honeymoon, of course. Update number four. This is the final post by OP. Damn, I don't know what to say. But everyone really wanted to know what happened, so I'm going to start off and say it. First, I spoke to my friend whose baby shower it was to apologize for the drama. I had no idea that was going to happen. Just so she hears it from me first, like a commenter suggested I do. And she had no idea my ex and I had a past, but she told me it's fine. The party awkward after that, but that's not on them and she doesn't blame me. 
It was great to hear because this was meant for her to celebrate her baby. And as her friend, I wanted to be there to celebrate with them. Regarding the marriage, it surprised me how long the wait was for a spot to become available at our courthouse. It was booked a long time ago. We ended up driving to another area of the state that had to stop in Chapel and got married there. We had a little park pavilion reception afterwards with a taco truck and cupcakes. I think we're going to have a big ceremony as a vow renewal and most people know that we're married already. We're mostly doing this because my company has kick butt health insurance and we're just moving for my job in a few months so we get better relocation benefits before marriage. I should mention this as well. To my complete surprise, my ex had the nerve to message me, asking for the address to the post-wedding celebration. So I called her and told that we know about her little games and that she has no place at our party and that she's disgusting for even asking. She then had the nerve to post a video about our phone call and a few people in the comments have been calling me all sorts of horrible names. I did not care since my entire family agrees that she or him did not join us. And I also spoke to Angela's parents. Apparently, Angela got fired at the job and I don't know how much about it, but she's staying with her parents now. They told me that they had a huge conversation a few days back and I was told the details. Her father told her and I quote, I think you are fickle. People are out of sight and out of mind for you, and I guess I'd stay single for a while. While her brother, who's been home with her, mentioned to him that what matters is she's happy. To which the mother says, Well, sometimes you have to think of the other person, and has mentioned feeling bad for me a few times. It seems there is no response from her. Her lack of empathy for me, or for anybody else for that matter, I know I chose divorce, but it was really still a very hard and sad decision. It's upsetting me, and the biggest red flag that I missed was immediately after I proposed, she said, Are you sure? Because I'm crazy. Then we laughed. This is a bit truth behind most humor. She isn't mentally ill. What does that really mean in any sort of constructive sense anyways? She masked or minimized a lot of issues she deals with at first and became dependent and broke up with me, and then emotionally abused me towards Emily. I feel like she knew how to mask her symptoms well. Anyways, I want to give a huge thank you to all the supportive comments and messages. I only saw most of the direct messages recently. Thank you. All right, so what we just witnessed was an absolute crap show. I'm talking about... Was this dramatic enough because the comment section was saying how OP went a bit too far, staging all this just to embarrass his ex. He should have just kept contact cut, never let her come back into the, into the story. But the thing about it is, everybody was calling him a doormat, a floor mat, whatever you want to call it, that's what he was. So I want to know your opinion. Do you think OP of this story? was nothing more than a giant floor mat to his ex-wife, and it was really hurting his relationship in current time. Okay, let's talk about it in the comment section, guys. Drop it down below. My name's Mr. Redito. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I narrate stories every single day, then animate them as well. If that sounds like something you're into, make sure you subscribe for daily videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see ya!